Hey, what is up guys, it's Barker here, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to drastically improve your FPS. See on the bottom left, I'm at 62. Now watch, I'm going to apply my settings, and I'll see what the FPS gets to. Alright, we're back in with the settings on, and you can see the FPS is more than doubled. It was at 113 to 120, and previously it was only at 60. So, that's a massive difference, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do it, and also how to reduce your input lag from about 30 milliseconds to around 8. Here we go. First off, you want to start off with a power plan. Press power into Windows, and then you go to additional power settings, and right here, you can press change plan settings, and you'll go to change advanced power options, and then right here, high performance. Click that, press apply, press OK, and that's all you have to do there. Now for the next option, open up game bar, In the settings, and once you're here, you're gonna turn off that. You're gonna turn off all that. Everything related to Game Boy, you basically don't want on because it's a pretty useless feature that just uses up your um, precious resources in your computer. Once all that is done, go here, go Task Manager, go to Startup, and everything which has a high startup impact, which you don't use, I recommend turning it off, and that'll actually help you a lot because everything which will be running in the background, usually won't be running. Yeah, it's quite useful for making it so your PC can run a bit better, especially if you have some annoying program using up all your processing power. And now one of the most important. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, open up NVIDIA control panel. There you go. And once that is open, you want to go to manage 3D settings. And here we go, global settings. Essentially you want to do all of these because I've went through it many times and I pretty much perfected it to be the best for high performance gaming. So image sharpening, sharpening off, ambient occlusion off, anisotropic filtering, application controlled, although you can just turn that off if you want to. Anti-aliasing FX, FXAA off, anti-aliasing gamma correction I have on, but you could easily turn that off. Anti-aliasing mode, application controlled, because in Rust I like to use TSAA. Anti-aliasing transparency off, background application max frame rate off. Computer GPUs all, which just makes it so I use all of my GPU cores while in gaming. DSR factors, you want to get this as low as possible, 1.2 is the lowest I can do. DSR smoothness, 33, although I'm pretty sure you can actually all the way to zero. Low latency mode you want an ultra, so it will really help with your latency issues if you have any. Max frame rate off, multi frame sampled AA off, OpenGL rendering GPU, set it to your best graphics card. Power management mode, prefer maximum performance. Preferred refresh rate, application controlled. Beta cache on, extra filtering and isotropic sample option off. Extra filtering negative LED bias allow. Texture filtering quality, high performance. Texture filtering trilinear optimization on. Threaded optimization is on auto. Triple buffering is on off. Vertical sync is on is 3D application setting, although I would recommend turning it off, just in case it is turning itself on. And then virtual reality pre-rendered frames does not matter as long as. In virtual reality pre-rendered frames doesn't matter unless you actually are playing with a VR headset, which you cannot do in Rust. And there we go, press apply, and that's all you have to do. And now to the final option, which isn't actually a part of the game. You want to go to Steam, you want to go to Properties, and you want to put in all of these launch options. These really help out with stutters, they help out with um, jumping high with physics steps. They make it so the CPU is running at its best. And you want to make sure that the CPU count is how many cores you have, and the threads is how many threads you have. You can check that by going Task Manager, Performance, CPU, and you can see right here I have 8 cores and 16 threads, which will mean that I put um, 8 and 16 in the command right here. And also, you see right here, Max Memory and GC Buffer, 14,000 means 14,000 megabytes, which is 14 gigabytes. And you see this by going here, Memory, I have 16, I want to leave 2 to like leave up to Chrome and everything like that, so... That's what I do there, 
14,000 to Rust and 2,000 for everything else. My GC buffer is 4 gigabytes, which is plenty for a GC buffer. But of course, if you have 8 gigabytes of RAM, set this to around 6 and set this around 240 or 2048, and that should be perfect. But yeah, I'll put this in the description um, and I'll do it for the average CPU, which will be 4 cores. So if you have more than 4 or less than 4, to change that. Alright, and now for the final step. In-game settings. In-game settings are very important as having bad ones can really mess you up. Of course, all image effects have them off unless you like sharpen on, but and that has a no performance hit, so that's pretty much fine to leave on. Experimental, everything off, but contact shadows. Graphics. Um, I usually have my graphics quality on 6 because I ran a server, I put it under 0, so yeah. Graphics quality on 6, shadow quality on 0, no cascades, which is really important. Um, all these on zero. Uh, shader level 250 or around that, 239, that's what I put it to. Draw distance and max so you can see um, supply drops and stuff really far away, although it doesn't really matter too much. Shadow distance on 50, which is the lowest. Robotic filtering on zero, or as low as it can go. Alex mapping on zero. And it has a high, um, high performance impact, so watch out for that one. Grass displacement on, it's very important because you can see guns as you walk over them and stuff a lot easier. Reflex mode is a new feature which um, gets rid of uh, system latency to make your mouse move faster and oil reaction times faster. So you want it on plus boost and that's very useful. And this one you don't want on at all, it's not actually to do with like, any performance things at all. All it does is make it so when you click, the little square comes up on the left. But you can't, you can't see it in the recording but yeah. Mesh quality, particle quality on zero, object quality on zero. Well, you could have the higher if you want to. Tree quality at max, and max tree mesh is up too. Terrain quality on zero, grass quality on zero, the core quality on zero. Other options to go over would be screen. I play in exclusive mode because apparently there are some latency benefits and FPS benefits to playing on full screen mode. But of course, if you get too many starters playing on full screen, then switch it to borderless. And my resolution, I play in 1920 by 1080 because it looks best and I really can't stand uh, stretch resolution because it makes me play worse and messes up with my aim and also makes the videos look worse so really there's no point in me switching. And FPS limit, I put on 0 which means that it's unlimited. Of course if I put it up to like 50 then that would mean that um, my FPS would never go above 50 but there really is no point in doing it. Unless you have a 60 hz monitor and you want to cap it at 60, that might be a good idea. but. I do not reach at um, 144Hz and I have a 144Hz monitor so there's no reason in capping it. And my controls of course are normal and if you want to know my sensitivity, 0 0.2 and 800 dpi. My audio of course, that doesn't really matter but everyone knows you should turn off instruments and keep voices off most of the time, unless you're a role player, then keep them on, you know. And user interface of course. This is pretty generic, everyone pretty much knows what to do with this, and my user interface scale is on 0 0.8, but you can put it lower if you have quite a big monitor or a small one or whatever. In general options, I play an 80 FOV because I feel like 90 is a bit too high and 70 is a bit too low, so in between is pretty much perfect because the targets are a little bit bigger playing on a lower FOV, but I can still see plenty. Compass visibility, of course I like to keep that on because I can see what direction people are. And when people call out in game, I can um, see exactly where they're pointing at. Stream mode. One funny thing about stream mode is if you turn it on and you make your own team, you see that it's named Massive Katie, which that's your unique name that it gives you whenever you go in stream mode, and they'll never change. So you do have a character which it's given to you, but if you want to know your name too, then that's right there. Rich presence. Um, it just means that people can see that if you're playing Rust. If you don't want people to see that you're playing Rust, then turn that off, of course. Nudity I have on underwear because I'm not a freak. Some people play uncensored mode and that's a bit weird. Hide signs is generally for streamers and show blood is for little kids if they don't want to see any blood. Physics on max gibbs on zero. You can have this higher if you like it, but I'm pretty sure it helps out um, FPS to have it on zero, so yeah, that's what I have there. But yeah, that's pretty much it, so I guess I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching, check out some of my other videos, subscribe and comment because I do reply to a lot of them, and yeah, see you later.